how are CAS the GPAs calculated? How, when you go to that universal application, are those GPAs spit out for your PA school applications? Hey there, future PAs. Welcome back to the PA platform channel where we break down everything you need to know about getting into PA school. And today we're talking about a particular subject, which is how are CAS the GPAs calculated? How, when you go to that universal application, are those GPAs spit out for your PA school applications? So this is important to know before you apply and we'll get into how it's done, why it's important, and how you can go about trying to estimate and calculate these GPAs before it's time to apply. If you've ever been confused about how this works, stick around. I'm going to simplify it for you and explain why it's such a big deal. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about why GPA is important. And we have some other videos on this as well, especially if you have a lower GPA, but make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Uh, PA programs are going to use your GPA as a key indicator of your ability to handle the rigorous coursework that you'll have in PA school. They have to standardize it. But here's the thing, it's not as simple as just averaging all your grades and they don't drop any. CASPA has its own unique way of calculating GPAs and understanding this process is so crucial so that you can have a realistic expectation and plan of where you're going to apply. One thing you don't want is to think you have a 3.2 GPA only to then find out that CASPA is going to calculate it at a 2.9. That can totally change which schools that you meet the minimums for. So let's break down how CASPA is going to calculate those GPAs and what you need to know to avoid surprises. It will be helpful if while you're trying to do this process, you have copies of your official transcripts. I recommend not using unofficial because sometimes they'll leave out specific courses. So CASPA is going to standardize your GPAs across all of your college, university credits so that those PA programs can compare applicants fairly. To do this, first they're gonna use something called quality points. Quality points are calculated by multiplying the number of credit hours for a course by the grade you received. For example, if you took a four credit hour course and earned a B, that's 12 quality points, a four times 3.0, which is the equivalent of a B. So you get those 12 points. CASPA FAQ has a whole chart on this that you can look at, but to calculate your overall GPA, you divide the total quality points by the total credit hours. For instance, if you earned 50 quality points over 20 credit hours, your GPA would be 2 points. Everything is calculated based on semester system also. So if your school was on quarter hours, CASPA will convert those using the formula of one quarter hour equals 0 0.667 semester hours. And you need to take those conversions into account when you are calculating your GPAs as well. Now this is where things get a little bit more detailed and complicated because CASPA doesn't just calculate one GPA, they calculate multiple GPAs and they break it down into all of these different categories. So they have your academic year, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, post back, and graduate. And then they have your science versus non-science courses. And they have overall and science for those. For science GPAs, they include subjects like biology, chemistry, physics, biochem. There's a whole list on the CASPA FAQ. And when you enter your coursework into CASPA, you'll assign each course to a specific category. I've done a whole video on how to do that, but just a heads up that CASPA might adjust this if they think that you miscategorize something. So you'll need to double check and be prepared for those things to change if you're a little unsure about some of those topics. Now, this is probably the most important part. CASPA includes all grades in their calculations, even repeated courses. Some colleges will only count the highest grade for a repeated course on transcript GPAs, but CASPA doesn't work this way, and it can make a big difference in your GPA calculations. So keep that in mind. Like if you took chemistry five times, every attempt is going to go into those calculations. If one of your schools calculates a last 60 hours or a specific GPA where they do drop courses, you will not see that listed on your CASPA GPA calculations. Now we also need to talk about withdrawals. Withdrawals are not included in your GPA unless it's a WF. So withdrawal fail will count as an F and bring your GPA down. Now pass fail doesn't count for a GPA and AP credits are also included, but they don't affect your GPA because they don't have associated grades. All of this is in the CASPA FAQ, so if you need a refresher or want to read through it, 
highly recommend doing that. Now, CAFPA has grade conversion charts for U.S. and Canadian schools, or if your transcript used kind of a funky scale, you can go to the CAFPA FAQ to see how those grades will translate and make sure that you are putting in the correct numbers. Let's talk about how PA programs actually use these GPAs. Some schools will stick strictly to the GPA that CASTA calculates. They're not going to recalculate it, but others might. So they usually will have this on their program websites as you're looking through, but you may never actually see those GPAs. Some schools will focus on the highest grade for repeated courses or emphasize those last 45 to 60 credit hours to see if you've improved over time. And that does give you an opportunity to have a little bit higher GPA if you're feeling like it's on the lower side. While they'll still likely look at your overall CASPA GPA and your overall science GPA, each program may weigh these numbers a little bit differently. So research the schools you're applying to and understand their specific requirements when it comes to GPA. So what's the takeaway here? The GPA that CASPA calculates might not be exactly what you expect. And that's okay. The key is to be prepared and know your numbers ahead of time before you apply. I see it every year where people go to the application cycle thinking they're right at that 3.0 and they don't quite make it. So if you need to take an extra class or do a little bit extra just to get you over that minimum or to increase your GPA, that's something you want to know ahead of time. One way to make sure that you are checking your GPAs and seeing if you are on track is a program called MAPT. It's an application tracker. It's completely free. Just go to MAPT.com or check the link in the description and you can enter in all of your grades. I recommend doing this by each semester as you go and it will calculate an accurate CASPA GPA. You can also use the calculator in there to see how additional credits may impact your GPA. Um, you can track your experiences and other things in there as well, but it's a great tool. All right, we know that GPA is not the only part of your application. We have your essays, your letters of recommendation, everything else is important too. But if you want to make sure your GPA is on track, take these tips, take some time to figure out what it is. If we can help, um, if you need counseling for lower GPA or not sure where to apply, figuring out your program list, head to the paplatform.com and we will help you out. And share this with your other fellow future PAs. If you're in a pre-PA club and you need a speaker or you feel like this would be helpful, um, definitely pass it along to them. And we just love to help you out in the PA platform. See you in the next video. Make sure you're subscribed and good luck on your PA school journey.